All right, guys, good morning. Uh, I'm going to walk you through how I pull honey. Uh, Y'all probably have your own system, your own methods and ways that you do it. But some people have expressed interest in how I do it. So first things first is we get the smoker lit and going good. It just makes life easier when you got a smoker going. You may not need it may work out good for you but if you do need it you got it the night before you're going to want to have everything ready to go i got my catch pan my drip pans these are made so that when i break the supers in between there's going to be some burr comb probably uh, it's going to drip it's going to leak honey so we need these so that we don't make a mess all over the truck, uh, cause robbing prematurely or anything, just so we can contain the honey. Uh, next things you're gonna need are your fume boards. Fume boards can be made very easily. They also, uh, you can purchase some. They'll have a felt material in the bottom. And it's kind of core plast on the top. I have found that these work better if you spray paint them black. I just haven't got around to doing these and my black ones are uh, just kind of wore out. They do get brittle and, and break from UV. Uh, next step. Our next thing you need to have is this Bego. This is Bego. You can get honey robber, honey bandit, all sorts of uh, different things you can spray on your fume boards. I personally only use Bego because it works. Uh, if you ever use Bego, you'll, you'll notice that nothing drives bees out of a super like Bego. Uh, it's butyric acid and it smells like cheese vomit. Uh, you don't want to get this stuff on your skin. You end up divorced. Um, it don't wash off. It, it's got to wear off. It don't wash off. It's pretty, pretty foul smelling stuff. Blower. I use a blower in combination with the fume boards because small hive beetles. Uh, I'm not only just blowing bees out, any straggler bees out. I'm also blowing small hive beetles out because I don't want to carry them back to the shop. Then you'll need fuel, plenty of straps. I bring along some uh, empty supers in case because our flow is still going a little bit here. Um, if the weather cooperates and uh, that's about it on equipment. Find my gloves guys. I gotta, I gotta put the rubber gloves on before I apply that Bego. I don't want that on my hands been there and done that that is not something you want on your clothes but definitely you don't want on your skin because it seems to wash out of clothes a little bit better than it does with soap and water off your off your skin now even though it smells like cheese vomit I still prefer the smell of Bego to uh, Honey Robber. Honey Robber has this cherry smell, and man, I can't stand it. It's just, it smells like uh, cheese cherry vomit. It's just awful. So, take your spray bottle. Now, if you keep this stuff year to year in the same spray bottle, it will uh, degrade your spray bottle to the point that it won't work. So this is something you are gonna have to change out your bottles with, uh, probably annually. Um, that's just my experience with it. Get your spray going. Spray the perimeter and spray across. Now, you notice I'm probably spraying quite a bit, but I don't like to stop and, and reapply Bigo later. All 
I'm gonna run two to start with, and if uh, if I'm feeling real froggy and energetic, I'll run four. But four is about all I want to do by myself. Now when you spray it like this, in the meantime, you're gonna stack them together like this and preserve your odor. So put that there, put this up where you ain't gonna spill it. It's expensive, but it's worth its weight in gold. With your blower, always fuel up before you start because it's so aggravating getting going good and getting a good rhythm and then having little things setting you back. So fill your fuel tank before you even start the thing. Now I spilt a little bit on my truck. But that's no big deal because I use drip pans. Got a bucket full of ratchet straps here. Also guys, I got my hooks. And we'll move our strap out of the way because we don't want to be tripping over that. And we just get situated to where Things will work good for us. These are made with a rim to catch any leaking honey, as you can see. They're made for a dolly to go under so I can move them around. And they're also high enough that my hooks can catch them and drag and push them around. They're also built strong enough that I can push them, push them with my hooks. Now generally at this point, I would start up my blower, but y'all don't want to hear that thing rattling around while we put these fume boards on. Let's see if I get y'all where you need to be. That'll work. I'll give a little smoke. Now some people may ask, Gus, why do you wear a full suit? I wear a full suit because a, a jacket is not a whole heck of a lot cheaper than a suit, and I'm a cheapskate. Also, uh, if I wasn't on camera, I wouldn't be near as careful or use as much smoke, uh, but since people do watch me, I, I try to um, show y'all good habits. Uh, a suit allows you to get in there and get your work done and get on down the road. So. That's why I like a suit. Now, this top super, ain't much going on. It ain't been that long that I put these on. So most all of these, this top super will not be needed or will be left behind. It's got a little weight to it though. That bottom super will get pulled. Let me make sure y'all can see this bottom super. All right, so smoke. 
smoke, get them moving, get them moving the direction you want them going. Fume board. Fume board does not go squared up right away. It always goes catty corner. The reason being, bees move up into that fume board when you put it on. I can't tell you why, they just do. They fly up into that thing. And then you get they get stuck on it and they don't know what to do with all that. So give them a little smoke underneath it. They ain't done nothing hardly at all in this one but clean it up. This one they've done pretty good in. And it's open. But we want them to finish that. So this is the one we'll be taking. We'll be getting two supers off of this one. I'm taking this one. Starting at this super because this stuff is capped. It's mostly capped and this is a third frame over. So, looks good. Lots of smoke. Get the bees moving. Now, once the sun comes up, these fume boards, they're going to work remarkably better. Uh, I've heard some people refer to these as solar fume boards, but... Let me show you why I passed up this super. <clears throat> There's honey in this super, the bees are working it, but you can see that white comb, lots of nectar. They're still doing things there. been a little cooler lots of rain showers lately last uh, week which is good but not great for honey production they do better when it's hot and dry now this I'll take and this one's got one two three four five five supers I'll take and I'll leave probably two on it because it's a powerhouse. That's center frame and it's capped good enough for me. All right guys, got those two smaller hives pulled down. That's pretty much how it goes. Put the fume board back on, then you have your other hive to work with. So you may be wondering uh, how I keep track of these supers to put back on the hive that they came off of. I, I don't. They're above queen excluders. They're above queen excluders, so there's no, uh, no issue with the queen or anything, so. They just go where they're needed. Yeah, so once I get a stack with this truck, about six high, because that's, uh, that's the limit to my reach, it's when the hook comes into play.
get it however far I think I'll need. I think that's far enough. Then I'll start the next stack. And when I, I get back to the honey house, I'll pull them this way and whichever way that I need to. Get along the sides, uh, sometimes using two at a time to pull. It'll keep you straight. Okay guys, I got a good opportunity to show you my resource hives. These colonies, uh, they're a basic four frame on each side, deeps or mediums, whatever, uh, whatever size I stack up there. Excuse my bees, y'all. They're a little riled up uh, with me pulling honey. So I smoke them down as best I can. Just give them lots of smoke. Drive them down. This one I already pulled off. So what I like to do is tip it up and just peer in between. And I can tell that that's not brewed because I don't run excluders on these. I let them do as they want. So I'll smoke them down real good. If that queen's up there, I'll make her get on the run. And then you want to tip that up. And check out if they've got brood up in there and it doesn't appear that they do. Now, I got it side by side on top of this lid. Take a fume board, push a fume board. Hopefully I'll drive them on down a little bit. Do as best I can to get the bees out of them. It's a little bit different situation than uh, with honey supers and an excluder. But these are important in my operation. They give me my drawn combs that I use in the spring for build up. Uh, they really speed things up for me. It's a great way to get more combs. There we go. Sometimes your fuel will get hot and burn out underneath your smoker fuel. And you just got to shove it down onto that bed of embers. If you can see here. Take a look right there. You see them running out. They are vacating the premises. Now it looks like I got a frame of foundation here. I can't tell. They may just have a narrow drone frame. But okay, yeah, they just pulled it out kind of flush. But that right there, that's no big deal. I'll just scrape that off and they'll have a pretty good start to some comb for me. So as you can see, I've got them on the run here. Kind of smoke them down the sides a little. It don't take long, guys. That bigo is good stuff. As you can see, I got them on the run. And the blower will get the rest out. I think I got y'all with me there.
So we'll move some stuff out of the way as we're taking up more room. Get my drip pan. Good old steel blower. Oh, come on now. There we go. Got most of them out, but they're on the box still. Guys, some of y'all might not understand. Um, that is not hurting those bees. They are just fine. I blow them out of my walking path. Uh, if I blow them over this way, I'm gonna end up trampling them and, and I don't wanna kill my bees. I don't wanna hurt my bees, but I do gotta get them out of my supers. So, blow them to the side out of the way. They're fine and they'll be right back over there to, to sting me in just a moment or two. Got them good and cleared out. Cut that noise maker off a minute. Oof. So this is another reason that I, I love the four frame boxes because they have a 10 frame footprint. I can use telescope and lids, I can use bottom boards, I can use the same stuff. So I like a four by four. Now, Y'all can see, got my bees here. And I do the same thing over again. Well, Smoker don't want to smoke, but I'll show y'all a little trick. Of smoke. Because I need this thick, thick smoke. That's what makes them move. Now, these are a pain. It's a different story than just pulling the lid off and putting the fume board on and rolling with it. But uh, it's worth it to me to get the combs.
I need these combs for the spring. They won't get these back. They'll get more foundation back. Don't ask me why, but bees in a vertical configuration, they just do better. They draw more out. And since I'm constantly robbing these, I was wondering why my height was off. I figured, see, I got a medium there. So we checked this one for brood. This one may have too much in it. And honestly, I've let these get a little too big. These done got too big on me. We want to keep them small and motivated. We don't want them big and feeling like a big hive. We want them to feel like a nucleus colony should, motivated to grow, not satisfied with the size they are. But we get busy, and stuff happens. Looks like I got some brood in here. Actually, I saw that brood, but it ain't much. They're, uh, they're back filling. Just got a few bees coming on out. Not too bad. Check the center frame. Oh yeah, that's a, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Good bit of brood there. Excellent pattern. Mm -mm -mm. Stung my finger. Now, this is a lot of ruckus I'm causing here, guys. All the way on down the line, so. These bees ain't real happy with me. But, they'll get over it and so will I. Sure thinking about growing your operation or you're in the process of growing your operation and you're trying to build up like I am um, it can be a slow process but use that time to your advantage and make things the way you need them to be to grow uh, at 300 and some colonies I know that I can't keep up the way that I'm pulling honey now uh, as I grow into 500 colonies. It's just not something that I want to do. I don't want to pull honey this way uh, with 500 colonies. So just thinking towards the future, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm thinking either a truck crane or a lift gate. Uh, my thoughts are with a lift gate are that I can uh, lower the lift gate, use my, my drip pans, and um, stack like that. Raise the lift gate up and roll with a dolly to the front of the truck. I mean, it really wouldn't be a whole lot slower than what I do now. Uh, it's definitely not as quick as a forklift, but I really just don't need a forklift. I'm a, I'm a stationary beekeeper. Um, I would love to have a forklift, but I don't have uh, 30 grand to invest in that right now. So I think a lift gate for next year I'm gonna do a lot more research. I've been doing a lot of research. Uh, I'm gonna look 
at different operations. I've heard of some Florida guys, smaller outfits that uh, use lift gates. Uh, the cranes used to be, uh, the boom poles and stuff used to be really popular uh, back before forklifts got so common. Um, and I don't think they'd be that difficult to design and build. Uh, easy loaders are really nice, but they're out of the price range as well. Um, like a Kelly boom lift or something like that, I think would probably fit what I need because most of my yards are relatively level. But uh, that's just some thoughts, guys. Uh, it's easy to get bit by the bug and want to grow, 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 but there's a lot of other small things that you have to have lined up as you grow. You need a lot of honey supers, uh, or you're just going to have problems managing your bees. Um, so you, you need a stockpile of equipment, you need a place to store that equipment, and you need um, a truck to handle things, uh, front end loader of some sort, I don't know, you just have to have a system. And it takes time to work these things out for you and what's best. And most of these are, are, are not things that you want to do over or buy again because um, it's expenses and each time you have to reconfigure what you're doing and sell something off and buy something better uh, I don't know how it works for you guys but I usually lose money so just some thoughts while I cool off back to the grind all right guys finished up got a pretty good load uh, this will be for the thorn extractor coming in here in the next day or so uh, we left the bees with a partial and an empty they're still working pretty good you can see this cotton still blooming these supers I don't know what the bees were working different, but they sure got heavier as I got to the end. Uh, a little humor for you there. Uh, this is primarily cotton honey with the bottom supers being sumac. So it should be pretty good blended up together. Uh, now comes the fun part, unloading this, but at least I get out of this suit. So hope you guys learned something. If you got any questions for me, Leave them in the comments, and I appreciate you watching. Guys, I wanted to show you real quick how I use these hooks to unload my truck. I've already got some of it off over here. Uh, I'll demonstrate to you how you can do it. I use the hooks to uh, drag them forward the drift. The drift bands, they slide pretty easily.
10 is about as tall as I go. Uh, after that point, it's a little different.